Gentlemen, I already found the best beater watch. It's a G-Shock G59, excuse me, GW9500. Super tough, super durable. So I already beat the game, so to speak. So we're going on a side quest. It is the GA2100 side quest. It is G-Shock's most popular series of watches. And I selected this one, which is in a burlap sack. Okay. And this is like an egg carton, but just for this one watch, all right? Cardboard pillow, all right? This is a really nice burlap sack though, you gotta admit. And there we go. <laughs> My first impression was, this color is kind of gross. It looks like, looks like slop that comes out of an oil well. I'm gonna be honest with you, when you look at the, the uh, open top tank, with all the oil-based mud coming out of, maybe some of you would think it would look like, uh, like mushroom gravy. I don't know. It, and all right, it has solar, but it also has Bluetooth. Not really excited about the Bluetooth, but I thought the strap looked really cool. Look at these rivets. There's like uh, rivets here on the holes, and this is a nice canvas material. And look at. Look, it matches my shirt. So I work in an oil field, and it's like the FR clothes, like this is an FR shirt. So the FR shirts we have to wear, they're either gray or tan. And in my work, they're gray, but I have this tan one. This is like the shirt I wear around the house doing yard work. But anyways, look how it matches. It kind of matches, it's the same kind of style as oil field clothes. And that's why I thought it would be a great accessory for my oil field flame resistant outfit but how tough is it well that's what the side quest is all about now this whole system of strappage a little bit different than your standard ga2100 okay the regular ga2100s are a lot like uh well you know like this regular casio watch where the, it has a resin band that sticks sticks straight down the premise being that See how it bounces? It protects, his, protects the watch. I can't get it to do it again. There we go. Anyways, but the uh, the gap in between, which I call the watch crotch. Maybe I shouldn't call that because I would hate for that name to catch on. It's pretty narrow on, on the GA2100s that I tried on, just like on the, the squares, right? You kind of need a big watch crotch if you're a big wrister, right? And, uh, you know, this is the King, the GXW56BB. The space underneath can accommodate a wide wrist. Not so on your standard GA2100s. And so Casio saw that a lot of people were putting strap adapters on their squares and on their GA2100s, so they did the same. But it's not for style reasons. A lot of us did that out of necessity. We want a band that plays all the way out. So, moment of truth. Does it fit? Hold on, let me take all this stuff off. Oh, it's plastic. All right, let me get this plastic off. Hold on. You know what? It's times like these where it's good to have a knife. All right. Let's cut this plastic off of this new watch that has a color reminiscent of, I don't know what you'd call this, mushroom gravy or a rotisserie chicken. And the watch itself, not black, not brown, uh, kind, of, kind of so ugly it's beautiful. All right. It's a good thing I had the powerful and quick deploying Tecto Delta. What is this called? I can't even remember. I'll leave a link below if you're interested in it. It's a, it's a nice knife. It's carbon forged handle. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. All right. Yes, we got it into. Button number three. All right, so we have room to spare. 
And my wrist, I lost weight because I've been using these fitness watches like this GBDH 2000. And so, you know, I'm down to 270 and my wrist size has come way down to, what did we say, eight and three eighths inches. And so, fitting not too tight. Yeah, it fits, this is great. All right, big wrister approved right here. This, uh, this band, you know, I, I think that you could easily go to eight and a half, maybe even, dare I say it, eight and, what would that be, eight and five eighths, maybe even eight and three quarters. I don't want to get anybody whose wrist size is eight and three quarters too excited, but just for reference, my wrist is just under eight and a half inches and we have notches to spare. I'm really happy to see that, guys. I'm really stoked. And as ugly as the, the, the body, this color is, this color, I really like this color. Like I said, it matches the FR clothes we wear. An oil field, the same kind of canvas. And we have some stitching, right? And fits under the sleeve really well, okay? So, this sleeve is really tight. This is a Carhartt shirt, uh, 2X tall, right? So, not a whole lot of room under the sleeve, and to be honest, when I wear the Mudman, it, it, it does have trouble getting under the sleeve. Now, I think that the whole 2100 series of Casio, one of the reasons why it's so popular is that it's like the, the thinnest watch. It stands proud, the shortest of all the G-Shock watches, so it's good at fitting under any sleeve, and that's what I like. A lot, of, a lot of small wristers think that us big wristers love big watches. Well, the truth is, us big wristers are generally larger in size, and therefore, we are encumbered walking through door jams when we have a watch that's too big. Really annoying. Just being totally naked walking through a, a, a door jam can be a problem, but to add a bulky watch, you know, it can get in the way. So... I do prefer the diminutive watches, but fortunately a lot of diminutive watches come with a smaller uh, band that doesn't always fit. So I'm, I'm really happy so far. Not happy about, where is it? Not happy about the Bluetooth. Where'd the Bluetooth thing go? I don't know. Little Bluetooth tag. So this one has Bluetooth, okay? Now let's take let's take a little bit of a look at uh, it. And yeah, let me uh, raise up this light a little bit. So. One cool thing about this watch face is that it has contrast and color on the hands. Now the original GA2100 had, had uh, it was black and, and it had kind of dark gray, grayish hands, which in promotional material looked too dark. And it was kind of frustrating for those of us who are champions of legibility. You know, we love legibility in a watch with a negative display like this one can infuriate us, right? And we're wondering what Casio is doing with making the dial and the face and the indices in the hands dark gray or black. Now, looking at the GA21 in person, it's not as bad as when you look at it <clears throat> on the website or even in, in videos. So I think that, you know, the GA21 is a best-selling watch. But it is good to see this, this contrast. Look at those hands. You can re really quickly acquire uh, the time. And those of us who love the analog watch face, you know, you get used to reading a watch. You kind of have a better idea of what time it is quicker than looking at a digital watch. I know a lot of millennials and Zoomers would have a hard time believing that. But when you look at the time, you, you, you read the number right away, but then you have to process what that number means. And when you look at the shape of, of, of the watch hands, you kind of have an idea right off the bat of, of how much time you have left before a certain deadline without actually decoding exactly what time it is. It's hard to explain, but I'll, I'll talk about that more in an upcoming video. All right, so we have the digital watch face down there and the hands are in the way. I think that you can get the hands to move out of the way. I've watched a lot of videos that you would think that I would know how to get the watch hands out of the way seeing so many video I think there's like a button combination you can press to get the hands out of the way because right now they're covering the the 
uh, digital LCD digital screen, which is positive. It's a positive screen. All right, so I'm pressing the mode button. You can see the sub dial advancing. All right. I was hoping that the sub dial would be a day of the week indicator. And I'm pretty sure that the standard GA2100, it's a day, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's a day of the week indicator right there. So you can look at the watch and tell right away, all right, there's a time, there's a day of the week. And like I've explained before, to the point people hate saying, hearing me say it, but I look at my watch to see what day of the week it is just about as often as I see, try to see what time it is. Uh, cause I, I, I can never remember what day of the week it is. I mean, I don't have a normal like Monday through Friday job. You know, I work like my shifts are, you know, span different weeks. Anyways, it's hard to explain. A lot of you who live lifestyles that are Monday through Friday know exactly what I'm talking about. You can lose track of what day of the week it is. So anyways, uh, pressing the mode button, the bottom left button goes through uh, right now it's pointing to alarm and then it gives you the battery it says LMH that's the battery level right now we're on M for medium and then we're back to WT which I guess is world time All right and again I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a way you can move the hands and I'm feel really dumb for doing this video and not knowing it now but you can see on on the uh um, what's that called? The LCD screen. You have the seconds ticking away, and then below that is the digital time. And obviously, this time needs to be set. All right. So having the Bluetooth on the watch, you can grab your phone. You can grab your phone app, and you can uh, sync up the Bluetooth, and it'll sync up the time. How accurate is that time sync, though? That's the burning question I want to answer and expect an upcoming video where we compare Bluetooth time sync with <clears throat> GPS time sync to the multi-band six time sync. And the battery, this says multi-band six, the battery is low, so the time is incorrect. I don't think it's acquired a time in, in a long time. Anyways, so I would want it to display the day of the week. That, like I said, that's important to me. And I'm going to have to read the directions to figure out how to do that. Anyways, <clears throat> what else can we say? There's a light. All right, so we have an LCD light. And tonight I'll check it out. So I'll do a YouTube short and uh, update you guys as to how the visibility is at, at night. But right now with these lights on, you can still see that LED light in that corner. And so when you activate the light, it illuminates the hands. And is there backlighting on the LCD? I'm sorry to say, I, I can't know for sure. It does appear as though that's the case. So you have backlight on the LCD and the LED to illuminate the hands. And I'm pretty sure that there's luminescence on the hands, all right? And uh, so stopwatch. You can get that going. Looks like it's already going. Yeah, no, there we go. Stopwatch is rolling. And I can easily just press the mode button and switch from stopwatch to the timer, which is set for, what is that, 10 minutes? And we'll get that going. Now it's ticking down from 10 minutes. So if you guys hang around for 10 minutes, we'll hear what that alarm sounds like. Speaking of alarms, there's the alarms, which we will check and see if there's an hourly signal. All right, so you may be like, oh, all watches have that. No, sir, not all watches, all right? If you get a highly advanced uh, uh, G-Shock watch that has an MIP display, the stopwatch doesn't display fractions of a second, nor does the timer surpass 60 minutes in timing. So much for being advanced, huh? And, uh, but guys, this strap, I, I really love the look of, the, of this strap. This is a nice looking strap. I, I just have a question. How stain resistant is this beautiful strap for this ugly watch? Well, there's only one way to find out. You know, we're going to have to, you know, test this watch in various 
um, uh, you know, substances that are known to stain clothes. And you can, you can look at my work FRs and see all of the stainage all over them. I mean, like I said, my clothes smell like diesel coming out of the dryer, you know, they're, they're pretty dirty. So we're going to see how stain resistant this band is and also how resistant this watch is to taking a ride in the washing machine, right? Because this is an article of clothing and it's water resistant and this is cloth. Doesn't it make sense that it should go in the washing machine? Now, one negative thing that uh, about this watch that I first thought of when I saw this, this whole like strap system has two sets of pins, all right? And you know my motto, if they're pins, they'll pop. And pins are pretty important. I had to send back my range man back to Casio for repair because the bolts that held the strap on came off. And, and where's the GBH 2000? I'll show you. Like the, see these big bolts? These on the Ranger Man came off on mine. And all the commenters are trying to blame me, saying that I abuse watches, which is ridiculous. They, they just can't, they just cannot fathom the idea that there's a design flaw in the new Range Man. So the question I have is that we have twice as much room for failure of the pins on this strap system. So how long will it last? Well, in that case, there's only one way to find out. We're gonna tough test it. We are going to tough test this watch, okay? And there's other materials that, that uh, Casio G-Shock are bringing besides, uh, you know, to their, to their bands, right? So this is, I'm gonna, we'll have to read about this band. There's like a whole little website on it. But there's also uh, some other fabric bands that Casio is rolling out. And so I would like to compare them all, okay? And we'll do the same thing that we did before. One stays, the other ones goes. We're gonna find the best, all right? Like I said, this is a side quest. I believe that I already found the best beater watch, okay? Uh, which is the GW9500. I mean, this is like the optimization of toughness, size, and cost, okay? You could probably buy tougher, but you know, it would cost more. You could probably buy tougher, but it would it would be bigger. This is a good optimization to me. Uh, you know, obviously we're still testing. Testing never ends. Semper testing. That's like quasi-Latin, all right? Always testing. So you want to stay tuned because maybe Maybe we could find a failure point for this watch. And of course, all our tests are practical tests. We're not like throwing them out of helicopters or running them over with tanks, okay? The, the tests are generally on the wrist and stuff that we would encounter in vocation or in a vocation, all right? So this GAB2100CT, let me, let me read about it, okay? Let me get my computer. I know that... They have a whole big write-up on it on the Casio G-Shock website. So let me just get my computer. All right. It's a ThinkPad. All right. Just got to move the camera a little bit. Yeah, I use the ThinkPad. Let me just get it right here where you can see it. All right. Zoom in, Tad. All right, so... Uh... Yeah, and also this is uh, Linux, all right. Um, I, yes, I am a Linux user. I am a GNOME man. I am not ashamed to admit my GNOME usage on Linux. All right, so where's the watch? Where'd the watch go? Oh, here it is. All right, I already forgot the, uh, what, what it's called. Oh. And this carbon core guard. That's part of how, what makes it so thin is that the materials they use, they can achieve the same level of durability that, you know, big old G-Shock would have, but in a much smaller package, all right? So this is the GAB2100CT. So we'll just type in this little uh, magnifying glass, GAB2100CT. And... Bing, bang, boom. Isn't this amazing? This website. All right. Yeah, so here's the one that I purchased. 
All right, and like I said, it looks cool, all right? Especially the rivets. That looks really cool. And it goes well with dungarees. I'm wearing dungarees now. Or some of you may call it denim. Some of you may call it jeans. But this color, look how nice it looks, right? So it's the same color as my, my shirt. It just goes together really well. That's my opinion, and I am in no ways an expert on fashion, okay? I, I had a guy, like there's all these alpha coaches online, like trying to teach men how to be like real men, probably at a cost, I don't know. But one guy was like criticizing my choice in grated Parmesan cheese. He said, it's not alpha of me to have pre-grated Parmesan cheese. And I'm guessing that, uh, that if I bought his course, he would, he would show how real men like grade their own Parmesan cheese. And I'm serious about this. This was in the comments. And I'm thinking, why, like, I'm, I'm 44 years old. I've been married for 20 years and I have nine kids. And now someone's going to teach me how to be a real man. <laughs> Doesn't that seem ridiculous? It did to me. But the guy in his little tirade used the word yikes. And I was like, all right, buddy, use the word yikes. Go back to Reddit. All right, so here's a little write-up about this this watch, which my first impression is positive, okay? The only negative thing on my first impression so far is that it has Bluetooth and that the this dial is not a day of the week. Even though this is the sick color of mushroom gravy, I'll give it a pass because I like the band, and I think that it, this is kind of a tactical color. We'll have to bring it out in the sun, see how it looks, you know, in real life. Indoors is not real life. All right, so these are the pictures. So the, there's a companion watch to this one, the GA20, the GAB2100 CT, and this has a different uh, suffix on it. And it has coffee. So this is like coffee flavored. And these are like the seasonings on a rotisserie chicken. So this is a rotisserie chicken one. That's why it reminded me of rotisserie chicken or mushroom gravy, because it's spicy, all right? Some people say that, uh, you know, we don't season they wrist. I do season my wrist. I season my wrist with uh, this watch. Looks beautiful in these pictures. And then look, it's not like a menu where the pictures don't, don't match reality. All right, we, I guess we don't really need to look at the pictures of the watch on account of the fact that I have it in my hand. I was here for the to read about it, all right? Oh, easy to see in darkness, all right, so it must have loom. All right. Bands and gentle colors derived from nature. All right, where else would colors come from? Is there like unnatural colors that, that we're, we don't know of? The cloth bands undergo a coloring process using food textile dyes extracted from food waste and plants that would otherwise have been discarded. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, like, is this going to get all washed out? If, like, you know, it's food dye. So if I chew on it, will my saliva wash off all the color and flavor? Oh, that's a good, that's a good test, though. I just thought of it. You've heard of tough tests. How about taste test? Have you taste tested your watch? We should taste test this watch. Coffee on the GA... Oh, listen. When I told you guys that you guys should hang around for 10 minutes to hear the alarm, you guys were like, ah, oh, there's no way I'm hanging around for 10 minutes. <laughs> you did! I got ya! <laughs> yeah, all right. So that alarm, I would rate it as being decent, okay? So many comments on, on the videos of the Casio watches, both G-Shock and regular Casio, have people complaining that the alarm's not loud enough. That was a decent alarm, okay? I'm not gonna say it was loud, it definitely would not have woken me up, there's no vibration, but I heard it, you all heard it, okay? So, uh, where are we? We're right here. Coffee of the GAB 2100CT-1A5 and Echinacea. Oh, okay. I was thinking that this was like sage, rosemary, or thyme. 
and I don't actually know what any of those spices are or look like, but they're in that folk song. Uh, don't make me sing it. You know the folk song. Rosemary, sage, and thyme. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Thank you. Yes. I knew that some of the boomers would remember which one that was. But anyways, this is Echinacea. So this is tea. So there's two watches in the series. You have the coffee and you have the tea. All right. So I went with tea. This is tea. We're going to spill the tea. Is that is that the phrase? We're going to we're going to sip on tea like Kermit the Frog and uh, smugly think to ourselves that we already gave you a word of warning. Uh, anyway, sorry. Okay, soft pastel tones and gentle color. The soft pastel tones add gentle color to your nature-minded lifestyle. This is going to be a great addition to me out in the oil field, drilling holes in the ground, helping to drill. I don't actually drill holes in the ground but providing support for drilling rigs, unplugging crude oil from the ground. Crude oil is all natural and organic, all right? Do the people who, who decide that they're gonna use like food waste to color their bands, do they understand that this plastic right here, doesn't matter how bio-resin they say it is, the plastic comes from natural gas. It's a petroleum product, all right? So this is plastic. This is definitely plastic from petroleum, all right? And <clears throat> somehow they are like, oh, we are superior because we used garbage to, to uh, color, you know, to dye this band. All right, that's good. You, you get so many good boy points, but I'm going to be out there going hammer down in a diesel truck while wearing this. So all your good boy points go out the window. I'm earning a lot of bad boy points. All right, variations in density and coloration in the natural fibers give this band distinctive texture and color. And also my usage is going to give it a distinctive color, a color of filth. Everything I wear is grimy and dirty. All right, here's my pointer pen. Look at, do you see, do you see all that dirt and grime and the cracks and crevices <clears throat> of my pointer pen? All right, here's, Look at, right there, in that nook, that giant nook. It's so big, it shouldn't even be called a nook. What is that? That crypt is full of filth on the king. I haven't even worn the king in some time. Might be a lot of dirt on my tecto knife. Can look inside of here. Always dirt, always grime, always grease. Everything that I own becomes dirty as I wear it. And so, I'm just adding to the, to the subtle uh, distinctions of color and tone of this band. And I, oh, how many washes through the laundry will it take before this gets to be washed out? All right, food textile, it's an actual thing. It's a brand of fashion industry focusing on reusing food waste to produce original dyes and providing threads and fabrics colored using those dyes. The project supports a sustainable lifestyle with the concept of breathing new life into what otherwise go to waste. So Casio G-Shock is taking literal trash, literal trash and selling it to you. And you guys think, oh great, I'm going to pay more for trash. I'm being a little facetious, but <laughs> uh, I mean, recycling is just trash. All right, band material ensures a comfortable fit. The cloth band is crafted from finely woven fabric using traceable organic true cotton, a material recognized for its recognized for its ethical sourcing. The band accented with metal buckle and band loops. So it has two band loops. It's kind of the double band loops come from NATO straps and this is not a NATO strap, but it does look cool. All right. I cannot deny that. And Obviously, they don't really keep in place. Gravity will is will most likely be pulling them towards the buckle. Not a big issue if you're a big wrister because it's not that much extra. But uh, you know, if you're a slave to fashion, you know that that's fine. If you're like more practical, like hey, my keeper cannot move, 
All right, well, a lot of these Casio watches have these little little notches. They, they ratchet, kind of have a ratcheting effect on the keeper to keep it in place. All right? But this is not fashionable. This is. And it does look cool, I have to admit that, even though I'm not a fashion guy. All right? The band, all right, this provides a smooth, comfortable fit on the wrist, according to the website. And I can confirm that. I just wore it once, and I did find it to be comfortable. My first impression was it was comfortable, okay? Now, long-term, how comfortable is it? I don't know. I've never actually had an, a, a canvas strap, so we will find out. And, and they have this asterisk here warning us that variations in density and coloration of natural fibers give this band. Yeah, they already said that. All right, so this is traceable organic cotton. Now, I'm in West Texas. Uh, I got a lot of buddies who are farmers and they grow cotton and there isn't a whole lot of organic cotton and uh, you know I'm, I'm in support of the cotton industry uh, those guys are out there and in fact I think a few guys watching right now are cotton farmers so I'd like to say hello to them or excuse me howdy and you know uh, I mean there's nothing wrong with new cotton right I mean new cotton you, you grow it out of the ground okay and then you bale it, right? And then, uh, you know, use that cotton to make products. The idea that, oh, we're gonna like recycle cotton. Well, you're gonna use a lot of energy to gather up that cotton and then processing. Processing is gonna use a lot of energy, which will probably be petroleum de derived, right? All the equipment that runs on electricity, that's gonna cut up the old cotton to make it into reusable cotton probably takes more energy than just growing cotton. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anyways, uh, appropriate manufacturing oversight means products that make both end user and producer happy. All right, do I feel happy? I don't, happiness is not really an emotion that I, uh, uh, you know, feel like, uh, like conquest. What, what emotion do you get from conquest or victory? That's that like that's the type of emotion I go for, right? Oh, okay. You guys see that? Bioresin. All right. Bioresin strikes again. This is bioresin, which either means that it's a marketing ploy that they like sprinkled a few leaves into the big vat of plastic or this is actual bioresin. Now, if you buy a car, and they claim to have all this environmental stuff on it. You better hope that it's all a marketing scam. You know, like Volkswagen did with their diesels, okay? Because if it's actually bioresin, then it's probably low quality. But if it's just a marketing ploy, you know, like I said, they just sprinkled a few leaves on it. But we will see uh, how well the bioresin stands up to our tough tests. All right. And that kind of truth telling that I'm dropping on you guys, you know, some people ask, oh, why doesn't Casio pay you for, for all your tough testing, for all, all of, you know, all of your input to their design? Well, that's why, okay? Because, you know, I provide a lot of insight to their designs that they, you know, implement and, and you know, and some of their uh, special edition watches and, you know, their tough testing and everything. They don't like hearing me making fun of all of this stupid environmental stuff because a lot of the stupid environmental stuff actually isn't not better for the environment, okay? And uh, like I explained to you with the cotton, I mean, cotton's a plant that a farmer can grow and bale up and you can use that to, to make textiles. Taking old textiles and processing them into new textiles takes a lot more energy. That's my, that's my contention. And uh, until you can disprove it, we're gonna go with that, okay? That's how it works. Anyways, my first impression is that I like this. Like I said, really comfortable. Uh, and I know that nobody wants to watch a guy put on, put on his wristwatch on YouTube, but that's just the way it is in the YouTube watch space. So stay tuned for more tough testing more usage. I'll start off by not using Bluetooth, setting it up, no Bluetooth, see how it goes. It is comfortable. We'll see how comfortable it is when it's like wet with sweat and covered in grease and grime 
oil, diesel, uh, coolant, uh, breakfast burrito drippings, and since it's 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 textile, it's it's food based textile, we ought to see how resistant it is to uh, <clears throat> rotisserie chicken grease, right? We ought to roast a chicken and dunk it in there and see if it adds some more character to the to the color of the band, all right? The rivets look cool, right? They really look cool, okay? Anyways, GAB 2100 CT-5A, that's this one, and the coffee colored one is the uh, GAB 2100 CT-1A5. I think that most of you guys are gonna prefer the darker colored one. You know, it's kind of like a weathered black color. And like I said, this is kind of like a mushroom gravy color. But the band, I think this is a really cool band. Anyways, guys, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.